once again, welcome back to the flat. Right, well, good morning everybody. Once again, welcome back to the flat. It's been a few days since I made a I made a video. Let's get this here. Uh, see if I can get this come straight enough first. It's looking a little bit wonky. Um, but I've had a rare uh, few of uh, feelings over the last weekend. I had my birthday Sunday, but it was beautiful. I had a nice quiet day. Uh, just spent it in the house. Man's come down the greenhouse, do a little bit of potting off and whatnot. Saturday, me uh, me laptop gave up the ghost. I know I'd been running a bit slow the last few um, the last few weeks, but. Um, the battery's uh, just gone so uh, the wife says well why don't you treat yourself to a nice new one so I sent it away and then it come yesterday so I spent all yesterday getting it loaded up fantastic Asus uh, same size 15.6 uh, 15 uh, laptop lovely thing uh, and that's where I do most of my work in the evening when I'm sitting down there so if you, you notice I haven't been on the plot for the last couple of nights well that's a reason um, I've been sorting my new laptop out but that's up and running now so there shouldn't be any problems um, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we saw the Lobelia. I think it's been about five, six weeks now since we saw it. And there we have it. Absolutely marvellous. And it's, of course, I saw it in rows, three rows in the tree. So they're much easier to plant out and pot off. Now, uh, there was a load of discussion about this when I was uh, sowing the packet. Now, a packet of this seed, there was about, um, there was about 800 seed in, just in this one alone. So if you divide that into rows, it's over 200 seed per row and some of the last were saying god that's a lot of seed that you got to remember lobelia a really tiny seed um, so if you sow them rows like that and it's much easier to to prick out um, now i broadcast lobelia because you'll be on for hours and hours and hours this is i've done this way for years um, an old nurseryman years ago showed us how he done his and uh, i've followed his way ever since and i do this with a lot of my seedlings i do it with petunias um, I do it with um, with all the daisies that for the hanging baskets, the Swan River daisy and um, the African daisies. I, I always sow them in rows, and so it's much easier, uh, much easier to pot off. I've got petunias down here. I'd started sowing some petunias, pricking some out into trays, but I will be sowing in multi trays like this. Now I've already started this one. Um, once again, when you start your sowing, when you're potting off, this is one of the most important times if you're plant safe because you're giving it some fresh compost and you're giving it a bit of room to grow but not too big a pot um, I've seen people doing potting off in the pot or from a small pot up to a large pot I never do that because you're putting your, your young seedlings or your young plants in a bigger compost which is going to be cold, wet, take a lot, lot longer to warm up and uh, sometimes it's detrimental to the plant's health so just small compost, small lamp, true as it is these will probably get potted off in, in, in module six modules um, when they get get a bit bigger. But uh, this is my own compost once again. This has been made about six, about three weeks ago. We made this and it's been sitting in the greenhouse and it's just nice and out. Not too wet, not too dry. Plenty of firm, um, plenty of sharp sand in it, so it's nice and free draining. Um, as I say, the labelia. Yeah, well, this is a cascade mix. Absolutely beautiful, fantastic for the trail and for the for the baskets. So what I like to do is to, uh, as you can see them, they have started one row off uh, and what I like to do is just dig little sections of it out it's quite easy to do, it's, and if your soil is nice and loose uh, I, just, I just take little take little sections away from, from the row, put them on top of your tray and then you can get your, your pricking tool doesn't matter what you use, little knife or pencil, anything and just go in amongst it and you get four or five little seedlings together in a group, like that, nice little group of lobelia, make it a hole, double them in, once again there's a nice little group there, double your hole, now I like to make them, you can make them, your groups as big as you want them, yeah, there's, now that little group there I can split into three, quite easily, now there's about, there must be about 30 seedlings in there, so that's why I keep saying to the lasses, don't worry about the amount of seedlings you put in your tray, because when you start splitting them up and dividing them up just go in there with your, your little your widget, whatever you're using 
just pull them apart quite easy just be a little be a little tender with them don't go riding and tearing because they are just sealing just ease them in now out of that one row I've filled one tray so there's 48 uh, 24 plants in that tray so I've got three rows so that's going to give me clamp them down and once again the seedlings are always uh, watered, pre-watered before I start putting them in um, nice clean water, nice fresh water I bring it down every day from up home, from uh, up, the, up the house and then once again just water them in with a spring of chamomile tea and there we have it as our first tree of lobelia such an easy plant to grow a little bit of heat down here but uh, what I did do with the big trees that I saw in the blue lobelia um, I took that up the garden a week ago and that's up in the melon house it's sitting up there it's not as warm as it is down here but it's just frost free and that's all I want because I don't want them plants to come on as fast as what these ones have as I say these ones are destined for the baskets the blue lobelia is lovely for the gardens. I mean, pots and stuff like that. But it's, uh, I like to uh, just slow that down a little bit. But that's my first tray of multi coloured lobelia. Such an easy plant to grow. And uh, with the right conditions, the right compost. And then, as I say, you can just dig them out. I'm going to put that to one side. As I say, I've got two rows left there to do. I'm being a little bit short here, I've been a little bit heavy on the seed there, if you can see that, and a little bit heavy on the seed there. But uh, my eyes aren't what they used to be. But if you can get your packet and just nice, easy rows, it doesn't matter. Once you start digging them out, you can split them out into little, little plantlets, threes, fours, fives, sixes, up to tens if you want. And once these grow on, once these are filled up pots, we'll plant them into uh, modules of six. Here you buy them from the shops, a six in a um, multi cells. These will go into them. They'll go on the back bench, on the greenhouse, yeah, on, the, on the garden. Maybe it's in end of April, beginning of May, and they'll sit there for a good fortnight on the back bench before they're ready to plant out. Sometimes it's the end of May, beginning of June, even before we start planting these out in the baskets. So there's no hurry for them. So I'm just going to pop them to one side. Well pleased with them. Another job I want to get out the road today. Um, Lots of people just in too much of a hurry to start potting off. You don't, you don't have to rush your plants. When your plants are ready, you'll know. Um, prime example, they're absolutely spot on for planting out. They've got the four leaves, which is always, I always wait for. And they're nice, they're a little bit long. They're not too long, but you can adjust that once you start putting them in your pots. I see people plant them off and they're tiny, they're two leaves. I know you want to get started and you you know, you, you, if your first year grows and that and you're, you're excited about getting them moved on, believe you me, if you leave them in your trees, you've got a good compost, nice deep tree, the roots are forming, they're, they're getting bigger and bigger, nice lovely little plants for putting off. As I say, I'm never in a hurry to pop my tomatoes off. That's the stage I love, love them at. And, uh, once again cups a small cup not a big one what will happen with these once they fill there they'll go in a, a bigger centimetre pot or a nine centimetre bag and they'll sit in the top of the greenhouse um, not just yet though they'll, they'll be in these cups for about a fortnight three weeks which once again takes it to the middle of May with the middle of April which is fine for me and we'll put them off again into a bigger pot and then they'll sit there until the, um, the middle of May now, two or three weeks before we even think about putting um, tomatoes into a cold greenhouse. Such an easy job to do, and it's uh, so satisfying to see your plants growing. But you know, just um, just take your time, a little bit of a time. I've got tomatoes, chilies all rumped away here. I've got my tobacco plants over the back there. They're growing wild. I've never grown them these before, but um, I know John Murphy was having a go at them. But that's me, John. That's me. Uh, that's me burly plants. I don't smoke myself, but uh, I've got a couple of friends that do, so no doubt they'll be wanting to try it. But um, 
I grew Nicotiana for years. Without, uh, the wife hates it. She doesn't like it because it's that sticky in there. I've stopped growing it, but um, being a Nicotiana, the tobacco plant, um, and when I was reading up on it, it says, oh, it's quite easy to grow here, and so I thought, I'd have a try it this year. But uh, that's something else we've got to talk about in the beginning of the year. But let's get these tomatoes for the time being before we get up the plot. So I've got me, I've got my small pot, half filled with compost, and I'm just going to get me dibber in here. As I say there, them two there are prime. Just loosen it up. You can see the soil is really, really loose, really free draining, and that's what you want. Now that should just ease itself out, and there is a first, first class little root on there, and that's what I'm talking about. Let your plants get onto that. Oh, I'm going to just knock a little bit of that soil out because I know it's going to, I want it to go a little bit further down than what. Yeah, I've got enough soil in there. Sit that in there, that's fantastic. Handful of soil, a handful of compost. There we are, and we're just going to gently push it in. Nothing difficult about that whatsoever. Now that's just below the leaves there. We've got four lovely sets of leaves. The seedling leaves, they'll tell you all the time. If you get a plant that hasn't got seedling leaves on and they haven't been grown properly, they've either had a check, a cold, they've had a draft on them, or they haven't been watered properly. This is the first class compost that I make up. Nice and gritty, nice and free draining. So I never have any trouble with over, with over watering. But once again, I never work from above. I set them in trays, pour the water into the tray, easy as that and the plants get all the nutrients all the water they need and we're just gonna pick me dibber up again I'm just gonna ease that root out in there once again you see absolutely first class that root system that's all they need just gonna pop that in there sit that in there handful of compost nothing difficult about it whatsoever you just take your time if you're not walking from underneath you're walking from above there we are. Absolutely spot on. Lovely little plants. And they will sit there for a good three weeks before they fill that pot up. If you are watering from above, then I Right, well, here we go. A uh, little default on the camera again. So, as I say, everything comes in threes. My laptop's gone. The camera's going a bit diffy. So, I'm, uh, I'm finishing this video off on the phone. It's just one thing after another. But, uh, I'm just hoping I can get the um, get the details on the phone a little bit more clear on what the camera is, and we'll uh, we'll get this video uploaded. As I was saying before, um, with the water, and if you're going to water from above, if you haven't got the facility to water down below with the trees, just make sure you just grab a small water can, or your um, your jug with a the nozzle on, and then what you can do, what you can do is you can water. Um, around the sides of the plant, around the plant, not on it because even water that you brought downstairs, you know, it's a temperature uh, in the greenhouse is still a little bit cold, so uh, don't water on top of your plants, just water around them. That way, the roots can get the moisture they need and they'll start growing a lot easier. That's that half a dozen giant orange done. I'm gonna, um, uh, one last thing before we get ourselves with the plot. Um, if you're going to pot off, make sure you give the, water, the, the plant itself a good drink the night before. These, I stood these in the tray last night to have uh, lukewarm water and give them a really good soak. And you, you, you see that they feel the weight of the tray, it's really heavy, but they've got a really good drink. And of course, that way they're nice and fresh for when you come to pot them off. Um, they recharge your water and they shouldn't have any problems with your, um, with your potting on. So that's just a couple of little tips just to help you on your way. Um, well, I've been trying to sort this out. I've finished the last tray of lobelia. Um, I've sort a tray full of busy Lizzie. I've got a tray full of lobelia done there. So, loads to do. Um, I'm going to get these in the barrow now and get these taken up the up the plot and we'll, uh, we'll shove these in the greenhouse. But uh, I'll take my camera up. Uh, I'll take my, my video, my phone up with us and hopefully we'll get a We'll get the video finished online. But um, yeah, that's the finish we're done here. I've got three or four of tomorrow's today. But um, 
there's another tray full there and it they can go for another they can go for another week yet absolutely marvelous just just the size of where i like them uh, and these are in little plug trays i can just pop the plug out and uh these are plum tomatoes and spanish plum so no doubt we'll be doing them in the video next week but uh once again with your trays what i like to do in here because i get the sun in the west of an afternoon now there's no sunshine now because it's just after lunchtime and my house is covering the sun but once it moves over to the west day eh, i'll get the sun this afternoon so your plants automatically draw towards the light so what i like to do each day is just turn the tree around easy job to do and of course in the evening i pop the little plastic trays back on top of them but leave them off through the day let them get as much light as i can and uh, they'll grow uh, a lot stronger okay so I'm gonna uh, we're gonna pop up the plot anyway and see what we can get done up there. See if we can get this video online. Okay, see you soon. Okay, right. Well, good afternoon. Once again, welcome back to the plot. Uh, I had a little bit confusion yesterday with the um, electrical implements as usual. First, me, as I say, on the uh, an earlier video, me me laptop crashed and now my camera's crashed and now I'm having to fill on my new iPhone that I got my daughter. Uh, so this is why the video has been that late this week. I'm not the greatest um, of uh, technical wizards for uh, for computers and cameras, but I'm I'm trying to find my way around. I'm just taking my time, and of course I think I'll finish this video off with the plot. I promised to try and get these um, parsnips put in this week, but uh, that's not going to happen. Of course, again, there's a little bit of sunshine, but the wind is absolutely bitterly cold. So I'm going to leave it, and I'm going to start a new video off on this Friday. <clears throat> if I get this um, camera all sorted out and then I'll start a new video off with sowing the parsnips and some uh, early carrots inside as you can see yeah uh, our, uh, our rhubarb beds back to normal now after one and a half years uh, we had that greenhouse that we got given um, nearly two years ago now and of course it's been sighted on the uh, on the rhubarb bed ever since we've got, what I managed to do this week it's been a lot of work a lot of um, concreting a lot of mixing uh, a lot of placing of flagstones, so I'm um, I'm a little bit there uh, knackered to say the least. But uh, at least it's in its, its it's in its place now. It's on a new frame, on a new bed, and of course all I've got to do now is fit the glass. Now, the glass is all over there. It's been under there for, for as I say, just under two years. That'll have to come out and give it a good clean down under the back benches, so I can get all them benches ready for the plants coming out. We've got quite a few plants down the far end there, so I'm um, I'm wanting to get a get a clean out so uh, we can get some of the plants from out the bottom polytunnel into here well there's a bed where the parsnips are going to go uh, they're going to go down the sides here of the uh, of the jap onions either side and there's three rows in between we'll get some uh, nice stump root carrots or the autumn two carrots the big heavy ones they can be, be in there all summer uh, when the jap onions come out we'll like just hire a little spring cabbage in or a little ball head summer cabbage which uh, takes the place of them they've had a feeding so they're just starting to pick up now I know it's only early March, but halfway through there, weren't they? Weren't they? Nearly into spring, but um, once you get going, they'll run away. They've had a nice feed, so all I'll do this week is I'll give them a good horn and I'll get the parsnips and the carrots purring on Friday. Uh, fruit bushes are just uh, romping away. These have only been in two, yeah. There's a pear, two cherry, a pear, and a small apple there, so we should get some good fruit off that. And all the other trees, of course, we'll give them a good spring at the end of last year. And they've had a good bag of manure on them and of course they've had a good handful of sulfate of potash now this is a job i wanted to do three years ago and of course with having accidents i never got it done got, getting these pathways laid down so i managed to get a couple of the, the large paving stones put down here to finish off this bed and what i've been doing i've been bringing the beds right in taking the ends off put new put new packing in and bringing the ends right to the pathway we still get a barrow down there, but that's all we need. Um, as I say, a lot of posts have been rotten now, because they've been in nearly eight years. So we've, uh, we've been digging a few of the posts out. We just started here this morning. I come up earlier in this morning because we needed a horse pipe. Um, if you can see up the top end there by the greenhouse, a horse pipe was leaking. We had two or three holes in it. Yeah, so I, was, I got one given about a year ago. It was in the drum, but it was jammed in the drum. So what I did, I took the whole hose out, discarded the drum, and then what I've done, I've uh, fed it right back through into the greenhouse and uh, put a whole new tube in. So uh, that's another job out of the way anyway. Happy as Larry. Alright, well, Polyanthus, it has been absolutely fantastic. 
Yeah, really nice plants this year. Full as daisy. And these are all the, the autumn sown ones. Yeah, so easy to grow. And I'm taking these some of these down home with me. That's a fox grove. They're absolutely fantastic plants. Lovely and fresh. And these have been out in the back bed for the last day, fortnight, since we brought them out the bottom body tunnel. But uh, yeah, can use this punch with that. A little bit clearer down this back end now since I shifted all the timber up the top end there. Uh, quite sure for that, I'll just give you a little quick look in here before we went to the main tunnel. I'll have to shut this door now, I just left it open this morning. But uh, up here we've got our uh, we've got our three rows of jazzy potatoes here. And uh, no doubt they'll need weed out next week and then we'll start banking them up, gently banking them up. But uh, here's this punch with that. That's our, uh, this is our plum tree. No, this is a cherry tree, sorry, that's well in bud. And of course, yeah, for, for our first crop of strawberries, and they're looking absolutely marvellous. Well pleased with them. Of course, we've had uh, two or three good sprains, I've had a handful of sulfate of potash on them, and they're lovely and clean. Really nice plants, i am move them on with them. We spent a little bit of time on them. Uh, as I say, it's, uh, if you want to put the time in, you get a first class crop, and they're growing absolutely marvellous. Move them on with them. Yep, we've got 24 baskets in here, so hopefully we should get a, a good crop out of them. Uh, as I say, I was hoping to get the, the parsnips in today, but um, I'm trying out this phone and seeing what I can uh, see what I can do with the phone. Uh, if it doesn't work, well, I'll have to start again. But, um, hopefully it'll look well. So, once again, that's a new bed we built last year. And then here we've got a couple of rows of Winston potatoes uh, as well as in the big greenhouse and they're, they're coming through smashing there now. Tip top. Once again, our strawberries. Uh, these, are the, these are the mother plants of the Albion. And this is where we took all the runners off these last year. Now we only brought these in three weeks ago. I uh, brought these in at the beginning of March and already they're picking up there. A lovely, lovely fresh um, foliage on there. And of course, all I do is I go around and give them a spray once a fortnight and uh, keep them nice and clean. Guys. No doubt we'll be pu pulling a spring cabbage uh, this weekend. There's some absolutely stunkers amongst them. Really lovely cabbage. They've had a, a dose of sulfate of ammonia, um, nitro chalk. They had that on and uh, they had the rhubarb, the, um, the nettle juice out of the barrels. They've had that on them. So they've had quite a good feed and plus all the the manure that was put in the beds at the beginning of the year. So uh, they're growing really well, I'm pleased with them. We've got a nice cabbage, a nice loose cabbage this, this Sunday, we we'll munch on. Uh, of course this is our um, this is our peach tree and it's absolutely lean in blossom. And oh the moon that. Fantastic. I love to see this in the springtime. And of course what I do when I come up here in the afternoon, first thing I do doesn't matter what the weather, open them patio doors. Remember when we fitted these last year? Fantastic. Get them opened up and get the fresh air in. Although there's nets along the side of the tunnel, but I like to open the doors and so it creates a draft right through and it gives the place a lovely, a lovely clean out. It can be a little pop in here. It's a metal house. And of course, what if in the evening I come up here and I put the little heater on, uh, it just keeps the frost free, that's all, because there's um, a lot of tender plants in here now. And of course, this is what Dale gets all brought up last week. Um, I'll be taking cutting some of these next week, so we'll probably do. We'll probably add that to the to the next video. We'll start taking some of these cuttings. There's some nice long shoots here. That one's Hamari Gold. That's a fantastic big lodge, um, yellow and gold uh, decorative. So no doubt we'll get some there. Uh, we'll get some cuttings off them. We'll get some cuttings off our croissants. So looks like we're going to have a busy little video. Uh, this thing I must get, must get these taken down. These are the Kalanja that was sold down home. Uh, there's there's quite a few in there. They're just a nice size now to put up. Now Kalanja, I love these uh, because I like to grow these in the greenhouse, the same as what I do with the marigold, and they're great for keeping away a white fly, green fly, anything like that. And of course, there's the uh, there's the large onions. They'll be ready for putting off soon. I'll get them in another week, I think. Yeah, these are the red ones, the large red. They're a little bit dry, so they want a bit water on them. But uh, I'll give them another week, and then we'll, we'll put them off in the, the video coming up. That's just a pack of seed I've got to go through. There's a box full there and a pack full there. So, busy times ahead. 
These are old dahlias along here. I brought these up from home, two was, and already they've been in here a fortnight and already they're starting to put up. So we'll get loads of cuttings off them. But if you want to know how to take the dahlia cuttings, well, just uh, you'll have to tune in the next week's video or the week after, and we'll show you how to go on. But uh, yeah, over the moon, that. First class. So, what I'm going to do. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna knock off. Take this camera down home and uh, see if I can upload this uh, upload this video. Oh, there's the sunshine just come out there. Uh, upload this video. Let's see, we've got loads of work to do. The pathways have uh, been in the right state. Um, so I'm gonna once I get these beds finished, I'm gonna concentrate on the pathways. Me and Roger will get all the black cloth lifted. We had chippings down here years ago, but uh, as I say, for three years, I've never done any maintenance work in the garden. So it's uh, it's, it's high time to get stuck in and get, uh, get the place really tidied up. Uh, this was two foot in snow a couple of weeks ago, if you remember. Yeah, this is a garlic bed, so what in, in between here, what I'm going to do is put some some rows of carrots. I'll get it along the front here, I'll get a couple of rows of uh, radish along the front there, so there's no, no waste and a couple of rows of carrots in between them. Yeah, they're growing well. All I want is a good um, a good weeding out and a little bit of uh, nitro chalk spread around them and they'll, they'll be fine. I've got one empty here. Well, I had the parsnips in there last year. Uh, but unfortunately, with all the water coming off the tunnels in there, they've got a bit too wet. The parsnips were all right, but uh, I'm hoping to shift these this year. Yeah, but we'll see what happens in the summer. But for the time being, as I say, it's, uh, it's work in progress. The beds are getting new boards in. It's getting straightened up, the pathways will be getting straightened up and of course it's starting to tick along just nicely, I'm more than one with that. Greenhouse is in position so happy days, I've still got a bit of work to do in the shed, that's all got to be fitted out on the inside, new benches uh, and a new sitting space, new sitting room, we've got a kettle in there, we've got a gas cooker in there so happy days, we'll have it all set for the summer. But, uh, I'm well pleased, the uh, sunshine is starting to come out there just nice so I'm going to Got a few sprouts to sow. Um, the the cabbages and that are coming on really well inside all the brassicas that were sowed. But I'll, uh, I'll probably start the new video off in there next week or on Friday and uh, show you the seedlings that we've started on. Um, we'll do a little bit more potting off and of course we'll, we'll definitely get them parsnips and the carrots sowed. Okay, so I'll see you all again in a, in a week's time, hopefully. Bye for now.